uh, a woman based in Buntingford joins us today to share her story after a divorce and being diagnosed with cancer. Georgina was scammed into paying £20,000 to rogue tradesmen whom she hired to do works within a home. The company had five star ratings on Facebook and Google, giving her no reason to doubt whether they'd get the job done. But that, I'm afraid, wasn't the case at all. So joining us now to discuss this is the co-founder of local building preservation and property care company, TRC, Andrew Bradshaw, and teacher and cowboy builder's victim, Georgina Schwan. So, look, I, I think we're going to go to you first, uh, Georgina. Tell us exactly what happened and how you got scammed. Oh, <laughs> I think the worst thing is it's a bit like victim blaming, isn't it? Because I feel like a, I feel like an idiot. I feel like a little girl. Sometimes um, I should have known better. But um, I'd love by the end of this program to sort of think maybe there should be policies in place to protect people like me who've only ever been to a supermarket and just presume that there are things in place to protect people. Um, so I was very vulnerable. I had just got divorced, as you said, and I was. Uh, just finished my chemotherapy treatment and I had to get a new home for my son and myself. And so it meant a lot to me because if I die, uh, which obviously happens when you have cancer, if it comes back, uh, what would I leave for my child? My mum's 80. I was a single mum and I got advice from a real estate agent saying, look, if you can get a conservatory out back, this house is very rentable or it's very good inheritance for your, you know, at that point, two-year-old son. So big emotional pressure for me to try and, you know, protect my boy. I'm not a wealthy person. It added a bit to my mortgage. I thought, great, I'll, I'll do that. And um, I did do my research. Like you said, I, I found five-star rating builders. I went online. I looked at a few. I talked to a few of them. And these guys actually cold-called me. Um, they came to my house. They said, I'll actually come and see you. And they sold it on them being a family business who's just expanding into the conservatory industry. And I thought, especially after, you know, being ill myself, I thought, gosh, that would be a lovely way to spend my money. I'm a nice person. I'd love to support your business and you can support me too. And so we sort of negotiated. They gave me quite a low quote. So I went with them and I, I, I really trusted them. I have... Um, a bit of a soft heart because I'm a teacher. I teach special educational needs in a hospital school. So, you know, believing in people <laughs> is kind of in my nature. Um, and Andrew Bradshaw, they is this a story <laughs> that you hear often then? Um, yes, very familiar. And good morning, everyone. And Georgine, I'm so sorry that you've, you've experienced this. But yeah, it's happening more and more, um, you know, with uh, with contractors going out, you know, the, people think, you know, they'll go on a website, um, they'll, they'll see a great website, they'll look at certain reviews channels, um, and they'll, they'll, they'll be sold. And unfortunately, um, it's when you actually look deeper into these companies, these, the, you know, these tradesmen, that uh, the, the digger you deep, the more information you'll find. I, gu I guess the question that people want to know, Andrew, is first of all, how do you avoid uh, getting a cowboy builder? I mean, as Georgina said, you know, she checked reviews. There were five-star reviews. So how, how do you avoid being scammed by a cowboy builder? And, and what recourse is there if you are scammed? Well, well, first, firstly, unfortunately, there's a lot of reviews platforms out there which aren't as genuine as others. For example, Google reviews, you know, anybody can pretty much put a Google review on. There are independent reviews channels, uh, reviews.co.uk, Trustpilot, things like that, where they're actually vetted and they will contact the, the, the customer to speak to them and confirm that, you know, the work has been done and, and it's acceptable. Um, another main thing is, is trying to use a company who's a member of a, of a trade association association um because if you if you're using a company who's who's a member of a, 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 a reputable trade association you have to be vetted there's a vetting process you have to prove for example financial viability yeah the, there's ongoing training um you, and, and more importantly there's there's actually access to arbitration and mediation services so if there is actually a dispute between the contractor and the client the association will come in as a mediator to help the to, to the help the customer Georgina, is there a happy ending to your story? How did you solve the situation? Well, unfortunately, uh, not. I'm, 
I've still got a big hole in my garden and I've got a huge pile of rubble, so I can't let my boy out there. We can't play out there. It's not safe. Um, and I raise, well, it is a bit embarrassing, but I work four days a week and I take care of my boy one day a week and I'm just making ends meet. I'm sure you're aware of all things like this with the housing, with the cost of living crisis. Um, so I started a GoFundMe page because even if I could just build a patio over the hole and pay to get rid of the, the hardcore, then I, I would be, you know, be able to rent my house if anything happened to me. Um, uh, Andrew, Andrew, what what advice would you give to Georgina, given the situation she's in at the moment? Could, what, could, what could we link Andrew what, what, and Georgina well, up just, in a way? What, 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 sh what should she What should she do? Well, it's a difficult scenario now. What's the latest with the actual company who did the work? What what what's the what's what are they saying at the moment? They uh they stopped talking to me in January. Uh I messaged them, I called them, they they screened my calls. Um I was thinking of going to the small claims court, but I I don't know. I don't know what to do. They're not talking. Yeah. Yeah, trading standards, you could always contact trading standards. I mean, one of the most important things is unfortunately not just to obviously protect you moving forward. It's it's to protect anybody else who may come into contact with this, this company who are doing this work. Maybe contact trading yeah. standards. Um, but you can go through, through the small claims court. I mean, obviously, it's a, not an ideal scenario. Uh, and there are obviously some, some, some financial uh, obligations with that. Um, but it's to try and just all. All I will. The advice I will give is is don't give up and try and get in. Try and get in touch with as many people as you can. Even contact a solicitor to see what they've done, and even naming and shaming um, in a situation like this, because you know the, the companies like this, and unfortunately, it's 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 going on more and more at the moment. Shouldn't be able to get away with it. Andrew Bradshaw, thank you very much indeed, and Georgina Schwan, good luck, uh, and we do wish you all the very best, Phil. And if you'd like to support Georgina on her journey to rebuild her home after being scammed, you can do that by going onto her GoFundMe page, Fix My Home After Builders Ruined It, it's called. Do you know what? It is difficult. I mean, I, I'm lucky on my dad's in the building profession, uh, so I've always turned to him to go through people you know, and he's always said, mm. get a project manager, Est, because mm. we did some work, didn't we, on ours and get a project manager. Well, I think but Georgina, otherwise... she shouldn't feel so guilty because lots of people get scammed. And, yeah, but these she, people... and she checked the and website, five-star reviews. These people are very clever and very good.